When Steve McMinn looks at trees, he tries to see their future. It's difficult to predict. You're thinking, man, I could cut a 12 out of the butt here. This piece would slice nicely. For decades, McMinn has supplied the guitar industry with trees grown from Alaska to Oregon. His customers include America's biggest guitar makers. At his shop in the foothills of the North Cascades, he cuts them, splits them, and listens to the results. I figured somebody could do a better job providing wood for musical instruments than had been done. In the course of a year, we'll cut enough wood for uh, three to 400,000 guitars. Lately, McMinn has been looking further into the future, trying to help make the guitar industry more sustainable. Guitars use some of the rarest woods on Earth. They command a high price, making them targets for poachers in parts of the world already hit hard by deforestation. It's increasingly difficult to legally, ethically source wood from the tropics. So guitar makers are increasingly interested in getting out of the tropics for their wood supplies. One place is McMinn's backyard. The Pacific Northwest is home to the fast-growing big leaf maple tree. Maple is a clean, green, legal, local wood. We're interested in seeing whether we can provide them with a secure supply for the long term. To find out, he partnered with Jim Matson. They're nice trees. Matson studies trees at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, British Columbia. Big leaf maples like these are common in the region, but very few of them will develop the beautiful appearance that guitar players want. When we think of wood, we mostly think of, of, of wood that looks something like this with a fairly straight grain, but it's also quite dull in its appearance. So many people like trees that have defects. Defective or figured grain is popular for decorative items, but nobody has figured out how to grow maple trees to look like this. You find it very rarely in, in nature. So what causes these defects? Matson had a hunch. In other kinds of trees, the wavy grain is genetic. So Matson began taking samples of figured maple trees and cloning them in his lab. When the trees get big enough, Matson will bring them here and turn 50 acres of old farmland into a figured maple plantation. It could take 10 years before McMinn knows whether his experiments are working. He's willing to wait. Left to my own, I would rather just have trees, period. If McMinn doesn't see guitars in their future, at least he'll have trees to look at.